And we're back with the fourth episode of the Student Media Podcast of the fall season. I'm your co-host, Deacon Tuttle, joined by the elusive Isaac Henson. See, I just kept it at one adjective this time because, you know, I kind of fumbled it on the last one. We're gonna keep I, think it's, I think it's smart. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to, you know, I talk a lot already, so, you know, I might as well just be concise with my words. How are you doing today, Isaac? I'm doing good. I'm tired. I have a long day ahead of me, but I'm excited to be here with you as always. Yes. Well, what keeps you going through on the long days? You got something to look forward to. You got a caffeinated drink. You got a reward for yourself after a long, hard day. Yeah. I'm going to head and get some coffee after this if we wrap up in time. There you go. Um, and then, you know, just whatever I get to do in this weekend. Uh, David Fincher's new movie, The Killer, comes out on Netflix this weekend. There you go. And I've seen it already, but I'm going to watch it again. Um. Yeah, and then next weekend, I'm excited. I'm going to be going to Pullman to go see one of my good friends. So hey, that should be go. exciting. Yeah. And uh, this review, is it going to be on Observer? Yeah, it's up right now, actually. So it's there on the go. issue that comes out tomorrow or yep. today. There you the go. issue that comes out today. Uh, and it's online right now. Ooh, and ooh. it will be up and available whenever our guest gets around to delivering the papers. Uh -huh. uh, sports editor of this Observer, my good friend, Chris Jones. What a transition. Welcome, yeah. Chris. Woo! We're gonna clap. Thanks. Well, um, Chris, how did you um, get connected to Observer in the first place, and what do you enjoy about working there? So I got connected with the Observer in the first place because it was a requirement for my major, but it ended up being a really cool opportunity to get involved on campus and to meet some really cool people. Um, and being the sports editor this quarter, I've had the opportunity to do a lot of fun sports coverage. Um, one highlight would be the in-depth feature on the basketball team that me and my reporter Lily just completed this last issue. Her good reporting skills really shown through in that issue, and it's a testament to the quality and dedication that we bring to sports journalism here at The Observer. So That's awesome. Well, fun fact for the audience that, that most would probably not know, that all three of us were in sports for a while there um, at the beginning of the year with Isaac being the sports editor, and now you transitioned to being the sports editor. How has that been? Um, It has been really fun, actually. One challenge has definitely been the limited staff this quarter, but it has been an opportunity for us to become even more collaborative. Um, Lily and I have streamlined our communication, and we found creative ways to cover a wide range of sports with the resources we have. Um, and our approach has kind of had a shift from merely just covering sports to having to like strategically choose our events to focus on and how to maximize our impact. So this definitely required a collective, um, a collective and just a collective approach to being adaptable. We started exploring different alternative story formats, such as leveraging social media, reaching out to the wider student community for their perspectives. Um, but really, it has been a collective effort to make the most of the resources at our disposal. But it has been really fun so far. Yeah, you mentioned the um, the in-depth feature, which is awesome. Congratulations on that. Would you say that is your standout work so far, something you're most proud of? Or do you have other things that you'd like to shout out? That one was really fun because that's the first one that me and Lily have gotten to um, work on together. But I feel like we have had a few other fun ones this quarter. Lily had a really good one um, on the Mariners team a couple weeks ago. And I had I've had a few fun um, coverage pieces on some athletes, athletes of the week. Um, players that got standout achievements. So that's been really fun to get to talk with people that I probably wouldn't have talked to otherwise and cover exciting things that matter to the student body. So it has, it has been fun. Um, in terms of another standout piece this quarter, I would say, I think the first issue that I did was pretty fun. I'm like blanking on exactly what it was about, but I do remember that one being pretty strong. 
I can recommend Crease Today profile on all the players who made All Academia. Um, that was a good story. Um, while you're pulling that up, Crease, can you think about how what the transition for you has been like going from a reporter to an editor and how you've been applying your skills in a leadership role? Yeah. So I remember my life was a lot easier when I was just your guys' boss. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in my first quarter with the observer last year, it was definitely more about learning the ropes. Um now being the sports editor, I'm more focused on not only curating quality sports content, but also mentoring and supporting our team members. Um, I feel like it's really important to build a cohesive sports section that contributes to the overall excellence of the observer. But um, I feel like being a tight knit team has been crucial for us in terms of, you know, fostering that kind of environment. Um, we make sure to have regular check-ins, maintaining open communication, celebrating each other's achievements. Um, Cause I feel like it's not just about the work. I feel like it's about creating an environment where everyone feels valued and supported um, in an environment where deadlines are tight and expectations are high. Every win, big or small, I feel like deserves acknowledgement. So we encourage our team to be direct and constructive in their feedback, understanding that it's not about personal opinions, but about elevating the quality of our work. Um, and I feel like this approach kind of ensures that everybody understands the stakes and is committed to delivering the best content possible. Um, I feel like it was definitely beneficial to start out as a reporter, um, as much as I wanted to jump into the paid position and cover exclusively sports and be more in charge of that. Um, I feel like there was a lot of valuable stuff that I learned in my first few quarters last year um, and transitioning those skills into the sports editor role. I feel like um, it's just made the transition a lot more seamless. Um, it makes me more confident in the advice and the constructive feedback that I give to my reporters. And um, I would say that one of the most valuable things that I learned um, from being a reporter that I've taken with me was um, just the value of, of being able to receive feedback in a constructive way, in a helpful way from classmates who, you know, might be younger than you, but that's your section editor. And when it comes down to it, you know, they they got that position. They, they are, um, they know more about this stuff than you. And so their input is valuable. And being able to take that in a way that you can really like benefit from it and learn from it. Um, I feel like was really valuable for me in the first two quarters. That's great. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. Like 100% you want to, especially now with a smaller staff that you guys are part of, like, I can see that like aspect of really needing to band together and, um, you know, just interact and, um, do what's best for the, uh, the collective and not so much on like your own interests sometimes. What do you create? It's been, oh, huh? sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. No, no, please go. I was just going to say it has been like really rad tag, really like grit and grind for us this quarter, both editorially and with our staff reporters. Um, and I think Chris really spoke to that there. Uh, and it is funny that you mentioned the age gap because that was really bizarre for me. <laughs> uh, leading you guys being like two years younger than you, I felt way out of my zone and, uh, not qualified at all but it was definitely an interesting dynamic to get used to but I feel like it was really helpful to kind of go through for those first few quarters with the observer because I feel like now it's a lot easier for me to to feel confident in what I'm saying and and know yeah this is this is what Isaac did and it worked out for me so yeah yeah I think uh especially in this field the the experience outweighs you know um like like age and that so I never had an issue with like I never thought about that I was just like oh yeah Isaac you know so much about this like 
please let me know what you think is a good pitch, what's not. And, you know, you were always respectful and gave me like leeway to do what I wanted as well, but always like constructive. So. Yeah, that was definitely more just an an internal manic monologue Mm -hmm. from me rather than what you guys were saying. So. Totally. Chris, where do you, where do you see your um, future pursuits going in, in terms of sports media? Is this something that you see, like uh, your work currently as sports editor representative of where you want to go. I think something that I've been really excited to like kind of dream about and fantasize about, but at the same time, I, all I know is that I definitely want to do something where I feel like I have an outlet to express myself creatively while also covering stories that matter to people. Um, And whether that's in sports or in some other journalistic field, I I know that I feel like that's definitely a passion for me. But I do feel like covering sports has been really fun. And I could absolutely see myself doing that down the line. So what drives you um, in journalism? Oh, <laughs> that's a good one, huh? That was, I got yeah. Um, I would say what drives me in journalism, I feel like is, I think a lot of it has to do with just having that outlet to just kind of, you know, express myself and have it be my words and my thoughts coming out. Because, you know, a lot of times it is easier to write things than it is to say things. But in terms of, like, reporting on things and and just journalism as a whole, I feel like what drives me is um, the commitment to being able to report on things accurately and genuinely and uh, the excitement and uh, the camaraderie that comes along with, you know, getting to interview all these really cool people that a lot of times come with really cool stories too when you get down to it in some of these interviews and I think my commitment to journalism you know comes from a place of just really wanting to really appreciating the value of telling the story from my side and and really getting to get to know these people that I'm talking to and what's kind of behind just kind of remembering that you know there's there's people behind these stories and a lot of times there's a lot more than meets the eye and getting to uncover that and write about it is something that I think is really cool and exciting so I'd say that's what drives me writer's integrity and infusing your own talents and um just genuinely um trying to dig deeper into people's stories um that's you know basic basic journalism right there that's good is there a what are you looking forward to in the next for the rest of this quarter or heading into next quarter uh with the o with yo I said the O, which probably oh. sounded a lot like Yo. Uh, you can talk about Yo if you want. We can do a Yo shout out hour here. Yeah, uh, it was great. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Um, so helpful for the sports section. <laughs> but um, in terms of moving forward, I'm really excited to see where the Observer is going to go throughout the rest of the year. Um, We're already looking into bringing some new staff onto the team. Um, We're looking to make some changes in the dynamic as a whole. And so I'm excited to see, you know, maybe if we can bulk up the pages of the Observer, explore new angles, new coverage topics. Um, But really, I'm just excited to um, get to collaborate further with the same people that I've been working with and 
meet new people to collaborate with as well. That's always been the most beneficial part for me, I think, is just getting to hear the perspectives of people who share my passion. And um, yeah, I just feel like that's, that's really valuable for me. So that's, that's probably what I'm most excited about. Shocking that there's no mention or reference to San Diego there. Uh, because yeah. I'm excited for that. So I like forgot about that. That's not until spring though, right? Uh, it's the end of this next quarter. So okay. yeah. Ooh. All right. What's what's yeah. going on in San Diego? Uh we're getting do you remember when uh, I don't know if you went, but we got sent to DC. That's right. Yeah. Last I year. That, but I... It's the same deal. It's just in San Diego this year. So very nice. Yeah. Sweet. Well, thanks, Chris, for joining us. Thank you for your your thoughtful responses and you know, telling our audience exactly what it's like. Um to move up the the leadership ladder and incorporating um yeah just all the tools that you've learned and what the process is like at observer right now with both of you guys on staff it's really cool to hear that and we're looking forward to reading more of your stories and just seeing um, how you dig deeper into people's stories thank you so much for having me yeah. <laughs>